We assign a certain meaning to death. There's a saying, life is sweet because of death. On the other hand, it might be that we assign such meaning because we cannot avoid death. If we could avoid dying, wouldn't it be better not to die? We don't know because no one has lived without dying. Nature has created birds that can fly and mantis shrimp that can punch at the speed of sound. Yet why has it not evolved a creature that can avoid death? If death is so bad and something to be avoided, why has evolution allowed living beings to die? Consider the eternal rivalry between herbivores and carnivores in nature, such as the famous rivals of the savanna, the gazelle and the cheetah. Surprisingly, cheetahs often fail at hunting and suffer from hunger, frequently resulting in victories for the gazelle. Polar bears have only a 10% hunting success rate, desert leopards 16%, and peregrine falcons about 7%. Cheetahs with a 41% success rate seem quite impressive. Why didn't the great force of natural selection make cheetahs faster and much stronger predators than gazelles? The Red Queen's Paradox suggests that nature engages in an endless arms race, but there are ultimately no winners or losers. Gazelles get faster to escape cheetahs, and cheetahs get faster to catch gazelles, creating an everlasting gap. However, contrary to this perception, one side often gains an advantageous position in nature's arms race. This is because the meaning of victory and defeat differs completely for each competing species. The winner here is the gazelle. If the gazelle fails to escape, it's the end. No more delicious grass or bright future. Most painfully, it will not be able to show the world to its cute baby gazelle. The genes of a caught gazelle do not get passed on and disappear. In such a scenario, natural selection works very strongly. If the genetic distribution of the gazelles that determine their survival is such, then the distribution of those with lower escape abilities will face crisis and likely disappear. Over time, the distribution graph will naturally shift toward faster gazelles. On the other hand, a cheetah that fails to hunt will face some hunger, but can try hunting again. This is why cheetahs cannot be much faster or more successful hunters than gazelles. In the world of evolution, the side facing more desperation and danger, and with a higher cost of failure, tends to hold a more advantageous position. This is similar to the cliché in animations or movies where the protagonist overcomes crises through the sacrifices of supporting characters. Such things happen constantly in the natural world. Elephants live about 60-70 years, but instead of dying of natural causes, they often die of starvation after their teeth wear out. Koalas often fall from trees, but they adopt an eagle pose to maximize air resistance. And their bones regenerate remarkably well, allowing them to survive falls from heights of 20-30 meters. However, these koalas also meet their fate when their teeth wear out, leading to starvation. Why have they evolved this way? The pressure of natural selection weakens over time. The most important thing in the world of evolution is whether genes are passed on or not. Young, strong individuals may have many opportunities to reproduce, but if they die before reproducing, their genes disappear forever. On the other hand, older individuals, though their physical abilities and reproductive capabilities may have significantly declined, are more likely to have already reproduced and have some offspring. Once the genes are passed on, the individual's mission is nearly complete. In this situation, the genes left in the gene pool are those of the older individuals. Successful reproduction is like genetic savings, leaving genes that are similar but with slight randomness to nature. The cost of failure becomes very low. However, as mentioned earlier, what changes the species is not the surviving gazelle but the dying gazelle. Biologist Peter Medawar proposed that genetic mutations that reduce the survival or reproductive ability of young individuals with high cost of failure would quickly disappear from the gene pool, but genetic mutations that affect older individuals with low cost of failure could accumulate in the gene pool. Thus, aging and death could result from harmful genetic traits appearing only in the later stages of life. What if these harmful genes, besides being harmful, provided positive effects to younger individuals, increasing their survival and reproductive abilities? If genes are harmful to older individuals but advantageous to younger ones, increasing their survival and reproductive success, such genes would spread more rapidly in the gene pool. For example, the regular nematode has a 20% higher reproduction rate in early life compared to the DAF2 gene mutant nematode, which has double the lifespan. In nature, unless older individuals like elephants or humans indirectly increase the survival and reproductive success of other individuals by passing on knowledge and wisdom, they are more likely to be quickly preyed upon and die in harsh environments. 
Organisms living in tough conditions tend to mature and age quickly to reproduce early. This means investing more energy in reproduction and survival rather than maintaining. The body in pristine condition might be advantageous for leaving genes behind. If the cost of body regeneration were not so high, it might be possible to avoid aging. In fact, the hydra, a creature with a significant portion of its cells as stem cells for easy regeneration, does not age well. Hydras can also clone themselves through asexual reproduction, potentially making them immortal under certain conditions. Even these hydras start aging when the environment rapidly deteriorates. This aging begins when they abandon asexual reproduction and start sexual reproduction. To cope with changing environments, diverse genes must emerge while unfit genes are removed. Immortal organisms with asexual reproduction can't easily adapt to these conditions, so hydras choose this path. From this perspective, sex is just a tool for survival. An interesting implication and tentative conclusion are that aging is a byproduct of sexual reproduction. Evolution is imperfect and organisms are far from perfect. On close observation, they seem like a patchwork full of flaws. Nature only solves immediate problems, leading to aquatic creatures like whales that can't breathe underwater. However, this imperfection makes nature beautiful. If all organisms were perfect, the world would be very monotonous, filled with one unchanging, perfect organism. If such an organism existed, how would it differ from non-living things? Nature teaches us that there is no perfection, and it's through failure and mistakes that we can move forward. Nature is about each finding its own answer. Why did whales evolve to drown despite being aquatic creatures? Why have birds targeted by cuckoos never won against them? Why do hosts always lose to parasites? Aren't these ironies what make us more fascinated by nature?